So conserve critically endangered gharials. Gharials are one kind of species of crocodiles, right? And uh, magar crocodile. Good morning, students. Welcome back to Plutus IAS. Right. So today <coughs> we are in 18th day, 18th day of our uh, 95 days prelims challenge. We are uh, studying environment subject environment. environment and ecology so in this uh, subject we are studying second second topic that is national parks so try i i try to focus on take and focus on only important aspects that have the most possibility of uh, coming in the examination so uh, today uh, because of that reason i have taken national parks right so today we will see the important national parks uh where there is a chance of question is being asked from so you try to uh, study uh, some more national parks which you uh, think important so here uh, within the one hour lecture i try to incorporate as many national parks as possible right so all over at present there are in total 106 national parks are there in total 106 national parks are there so if you uh, try to have a similarity uh i mean just two days we have uh, before we have discussed amendments to the constitution so till now we have made 106 amendments to the constitution so the number is same 106 and 106 uh, try to remember this similarity try to remember this parity so 106 constitutional amendments are there similarly 106 national parks are there in india so basically national parks are declared under uh <coughs> protection of wildlife act protection of wildlife right 1972 right so uh, based on this act so both national parks uh, apart from national parks the wildlife sanctuary sanctuaries are also there they are also declared uh, based on this act right right without wasting much time we will go and uh, see the important acts uh that are there in our country so i i try to cover as many national parks as possible you also try to cover some more parks and to try uh, and delve some more deep into the aspects right uh, about the national parks right the first one is jim corbett national park it is established in 1936 so this becomes the first national park to be declared in india right it was uh, formally known as Haley National Park and was renamed after the renowned British hunter and conservationist Jim Corbett. So, based on I mean uh, on his name, the uh, national park has been renamed. Right. So, it is the first national park that is established in India. Right. Now we will understand the geography and the terrain. So, it is basically located at the foothills of Himalayas. Right. Basically, it is in Uttarakhand. right jim corbett national park is in uttarakhand right so it uh, spreads across the districts of nainital and pauri garhwal so basically uh, in these districts it is the park is spreading right the park encompasses diverse landscapes including riverine belts are there hills are there and grasslands is also there so basically the art, uh, the park is known for natural beauty landscapes right so biodiversity the national park is also home for varied biodiversity including rich flora and fauna some of the species that can be found here are bengal tigers as well as many other carnivores are there such as leopards indian elephants and several species of deer is also there right so the park is, uh, the park is also heaven for bird watchers hosting a diverse avian population so many species of birds are also there right dikala zone is there so <coughs> within the corbett national park it is particularly popular among visitors so it offers panoramic views of uh, grasslands and is known for its high tiger density so because, uh, within the park dikala zone is there right similarly within the national park the corbett Muse museum is located 
So it is located in Kala Dungi uh, Corbett Museum. It is uh, dedicated to Jim Corbett and the show causes the his life, writing, etc. And it also contributions his contributions to wildlife conservation. Right. So similarly, within the <coughs> within the national park, the Ram Ganga River flows through the park. It adds to scenic beauty and serves as a crucial water source for the diverse wildlife. Right. Similarly, though uh, some of the areas are part of the Project Tiger. So basically, we have a Project Tiger program for conservation of tigers. So some parts of the park fall under this Project Tiger. Right. So some of the areas are designated as part of the Project Tiger. Uh, tiger. So basically, this park has played a significant role in conservation of tigers. So it, it is, I mean, first, it is one of the first areas where the conservation of tiger have been taken place, right? This is some of the important information about the uh, Jim Corbett National Park. Similarly, the second one is Ranathambore National Park. It is in Rajasthan. So it is situated, situa situated in the northwestern part of Rajasthan, right? It is also a wildlife sanctuary. It is also a famous wildlife sanctuary. Right. So it is established as Savai Madhopur Game Sanctuary in 1955. Right. It gained a status of national park in 1980. So it is located near the town of Savai Madhopur, encompasses a historic Ranathambur fort. So basically, the Ranathambur fort also part under the purview of the Ranthambore National Park. So it is also home to diverse flora and fauna. Some of the uh, bio uh, wildlife here are Bengal tigers, leopards, Indian wild dogs, we also call it as dholes, and the sambar deer, <coughs> and the spotted deer, sloth bears, and a myriad of bird species also there, right? <coughs> Similarly, the conservation for uh, Bengal tiger also taken place here. So the Ranthambur National Park is particularly famous for successful conservation efforts aimed at preserving the Bengal tiger. So here the, Beng uh, the Ranthambur National Park comprises a healthy size of Bengal tiger population. Right. Similarly, one important attraction here is Ranthambur Fort situated within the park adds cultural and historical significance to this park, right. Next important park, Adoba National Park. It is uh, located in Maharashtra. It is a prominent wildlife sanctuary also, right. So, Tadoba National Park, it is also known as the Tadoba Andheri Tiger Reserve. It was established in 1955. So it is the one of the oldest and uh, largest national parks in Maharashtra dedicated to the conservation of uh, Bengal tiger. Geographical features, so it is uh, situated in the Chandrapur district of Maharashtra. It is characterized by a mix of rugged cliffs, marshlands and a dense forest. So it has a typical, uh, we can say, landscape. Right. So, it is also similarly, the park is traversed by Andheri river. So try to remember the rivers uh, through, I mean the rivers, particular rivers flowing through the national parks because in the prelims in the past, there is a question about the national park and uh, associated river. So try to remember the rivers associated with the national parks also. So here the park is traveled means Andheri river is flowing through the Andheri <coughs> Uh, Tadoba Andheri National Park, right. Flora and fauna, similarly. So, <coughs> the park is known for its rich biodiversity, both including flora and fauna. So, apart from Bengal tiger, the park is home to leopards, sloth bears, Indian, bi Indian bison, and uh, spotted deer, and numerous bird species, right. Similarly, the park is known for tiger conservation. Right. Similarly, the Tadoba is lake is also situated in the national park. It is a picturesque lake, a significant water source, source 
the lake is a significant water source within the uh, national park. <coughs> so the Tadova is divided into multiple zones for uh, better management of the national park. So it is each part is offering a unique, uh, I mean we can say sightseeing. So zones like Mohor, Mohoroli and uh, Kolara, they are popular among visitors for uh, tiger sightings, whereas Tadova zone is known for its uh, diverse bird life, right? Floral diversity, Tadova vegetation includes southern tropical and dry deciduous forest, creating a habitat for variety of plant species. So plant species also very, very important in this particular national park. So the park's floral diversity contributes to its overall ecological balance, right? Next is Kanha National Park. It is located in Madhya Pradesh. So in 19, uh, established in 1955, it is one of the first tiger reserves in India and forms the core of Kangra, Kanha Tiger Reserve. So the Kanha National Park forms the core of the Kanha National, uh, Kanha Tiger Reserve. The geography, it is located in Maikal Hills of Satpura Range. Uh, so it is located in Maikal Hills of Satpura Range. <coughs> it encompasses, the national park encompasses diverse landscapes including sal and mixed deciduous forests, plateaus and meadows. Meadows means grasslands, right. The Banjar and Halon rivers uh, traverse the park. So basically two rivers are flowing through this park. Those are Banjar and Halon. So they are contributing to its scenic beauty and also they act as the water source for this particular national park. So biodiversity, if you see, it is renowned for its diverse flora and fauna. Park is home to significant population of Bengal tigers, leopards, Indian wild dogs and bara singa. That is swamp deer and a variety of bird species. So the famous and exclusive species here is bara singa. Right. Similarly, uh, the important attraction here is Kanha Meadows. So the vast open grand uh, grasslands known as Kanha Meadows provide picturesque setting and uh, serve as a ideal habitat for herbivores and the predators. So whenever there are grasslands, large number of deer and other herbivores will be there. Right. <coughs> Tiger conservation. So, Kanha National Park has been pioneering tiger conservation uh, efforts also. So, it also played a crucial role in implementation of Project Tiger. Right. This is some of the important information about the Kanha National Park. Next is Bandavgad National Park. It is also situated, situated in Madhya Pradesh. So, it was established in 1968. So, it is one of the popular national parks in India. It is also known for the conservation of tigers, right. It is located in the Vindhyan range and uh, <coughs> Bandavgad is characterized by mix of rocky hills, grassy meadows, meadows means uh, grasslands and uh, dense sal forest, right. So here also a diverse kind of ecosystem landscapes are uh, incorporated, right. When it comes to biodiversity, it is renowned for its diverse flora and fauna. Bengal tigers, apart from Bengal tigers, the park is home to leopards, Indian bison, sambar deer and various species of uh, birds. Historical significance, the park is known for ancient Bandavgad fort. So the Bandavgad fort is situated or located within the park. Right. Tiger conservation, the uh, Bandavgad National Park played an important role in the tiger, uh, tiger conservation also. Similarly, the Kajuraho temples, they are <coughs> close to the, they are uh, situated clo in close proximity to the uh, Bandavgad National Park. We also know the Kajuraho temples, they are included in the cultural <coughs> heritage of, uh, they are included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, Kajuraho temples. <coughs> so they serve as a uh, tourist attraction for people who are coming to this particular uh, par park. 
Right. Next one is Panna National Park. It is also located in Madhya Pradesh. So it was established in 1981 and later became a Tiger Reserve in 1994. It is located in the Vindhyan Ranges. Right. So here the landscapes are plates, uh, plateaus are there, gorges and dense forests along the banks of the Ken River. So basically the Panha National Park is situated uh, along the banks of the Ken River. Right. Biodiversity, it is known for its diverse wildlife and uh, including Bengal tigers, leopards, Indian vultures and various species of deer. So the park is also home to variety of migratory bar birds adding ecological significance. Similarly here an important Garial Sanctuary. Garial Sanctuary is situated adjacent to Panna National Park. <laughs> Kin Gari, uh, Garial Sanctuary is uh, Sanctuary. It is aimed to preserve the crocodiles. Right. So conserve critically endangered Garials. Garials are one kind of species of crocodiles right and uh, mugger crocodile is also conserved here so this sanctuary highlights the park's commitment to uh, protecting aquatic biodiversity also right here there are several waterfalls which, which are adding to the tourist attraction so this is some of the important uh, important aspects about the kanha national park so here the points here to remember are ken river is uh, flowing through this particular park and also uh, Ken Gharial Sanctuary is situated adjacent to the park. And one more important aspect is the diamond mining history. So basically the Panna was known for diamond mining once upon a time. Right. So these are some of the important aspects about the Panna National Park. Next one is Pench National Park. It is also located in the Madhya Pradesh. Right. <coughs> Right. So basically, this is well known for the uh, Jungle Book. <coughs> uh, Rudriya Kipling. So basically, he has uh, taken inspiration from this particular park uh, when he was writing his famous novel, uh, The Jungle Book. Right. So it was established in 1975. <coughs> so it has the area of seven, uh, 758 square kilometers. So it is situated in the southern reaches of the Satpura range. And it is named after the Pench River that flows through the heart, creating a picturesque landscape. So the river associ associated here is Pench River. The ranges are Satpura Ranges. Satpura Ranges. Biodiversity. So it, uh, it is hosting a vibrant biodiversity. Variety of encompassing variety flora and fauna. It is home for uh, many wildlife, including Bengal tigers, leopards, Indian wild dogs, and bison, Indian bison, sambar deer, spotted deer, and a plethora of bird species. So, association with the Jungle Book, Pench National Park is believed to have inspired Rudyard uh, Kipling for class his classic novel, Jungle Book. Right. Next one is Sundarban National Park, uh, it is located in uh, West Bengal. So, <coughs> so, world's largest mangrove. So, the Sundarban National Park is associated with the world's longest or largest mangrove for forest. So, Sundarban is the largest mangrove forest globally stretching across India, Bangladesh. So, the park's unique ecosystem is shaped by intricate network of tidal waterways, mud flats and small islands formed by the Ganges, Brahmaputra and Meghna rivers. So basically Sundarban's National Park was established in 1984 and later in 1987 it is designated as a World Heritage, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Similarly, it is also a Ramsar wetland of international importance. So basically try to understand the significance of the uh, Sundarban National Park. So biodiversity, it is home to diverse array of flora and fauna adapted to brackish water. So backwater, the Sundarbans are known for backwaters, so brackish water. So many flora and fauna are adapted to this 
brackish water ecosystem so water conditions of brack brackish water water conditions are there here so notable species here are bengal tiger salt water crocodile spotted deer wild boar and various bird species including iconic indian python so all this uh, wildlife diverse wildlife is there so basically the ecosystem is brackish water ecosystem or the delta ecosystem right ecosystem <coughs> right similarly both uh, <coughs> flora and uh, fauna in that fauna aquatic uh, i mean the salt water crocodiles are also there this is the special attraction here here sanjay kali wildlife sanctuary is also situated so within the sundarbans sanjay kali wildlife sanctuary is notable area for wildlife conservation and ecotourism it houses a bird sanctuary a crocodile pond and a what uh, watch tower for observation of wild wildlife similarly the park is also known for mangrove flora so sundarbans features unique unique mangrove system with species such as sundari so because of this name only sundari only the name sundarbans emerged right also geva is there another species and kiora so this is also these are varieties of mangrove species so these mangroves not only provide a habitat for diverse flora but also act as a natural barrier against the coastal erosion and even during the cyclones they act as a natural barrier or natural shelter right so this is these are some of the important aspects about the uh, sundarban national parks similarly uh, kajiranga national park it is located in assam establishment so it was established in 1905 later it later granted the status of unesco world heritage site in 1985 recognizing the important and the conservation efforts of about the of the park right so basic attraction major attraction here is one horned rhino one horned rhino we also call it as indian rhino so it is the major attraction here so kajiranga is known renowned for its successful conservation of indian one horned rhino a species that is faced severe threats of extinction so basically the rhino is poached poaching is the major threat for uh, rhino so basically the rhino is poached for the its horn so basically it is believed that the horn possesses some medical values medical values there so because of that horn the medical value uh, it is uh, the horn is used for preparing certain medicines traditional medicines so because of that uh, reason the horn the rhino is posed increasingly i mean there there are lot of threats so the number was decreasing a lot so due to the conservation efforts the rhino has been preserved and uh, the number uh, gradually started increasing so basically the park is known for its conservation efforts of one horned rhino right so basically now we will understand the geography and the terrain of the kajiranga national park it is nestled in the flood plains of brahmaputra river so kajiranga features diverse landscape landscape including grasslands wetlands and dense forest <coughs> the annual flooding of the brahmaputra contribute contribute contributes to parks unique ecosystem so one important aspect aspect is annual flooding annual flooding of annual flooding of the park by brahmaputra river brahmaputra river right so try to remember this unique aspects like one horned one horned rhino and the flooding of the flood plains Uh, flooding by brahmaputra river so these are unique uh, features when it comes to kajiranga national park the examiner may focus here and can ask questions from here <coughs> so wetlands and waterfall so kajiranga's wetlands including the iconic kajiranga beel beels means uh, wetland right they are crucial for water flow waterfall 
सो वाटरफॉल इज ए बर्ड राइट एंड माइग्रेटरी अनदर माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स सो बेसिकली द पार्क ऑल्सो होस ए सिग्निफिकेंट पॉपुलेशन ऑफ माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स ड्यूरिंग विंटर मंथ right making a paradise for bird watcher so basically during the winter season many number of migratory birds will come here so as we have we have already studied rhino conservation the park is famous for rhino rhino conservation similarly the project tiger it also a space for project tiger so it is incorporated under the under the project tiger conservation right next another important park manas national park assam <laughs> it is also a world heritage site so it is designated declared as a unesco world heritage site in 1985 right biosphere reserve manas national park is also uh, it is i mean the national park incorporated under the manas biosphere reserve so the national park is also designated as the biosphere reserve emphasizing the role in conserving the biodiversity right it is located at the foothills of himalayas manas national park features diverse landscape including grasslands tropical forests and wetlands so the river flowing through the park is manas river so manas river is flowing through the park contributing to its rich uh, rich biodiversity right it is home to a wide variety of wildlife including bengal tiger indian rhinoceros indian elephant clouded leopard and uh, assam roofed turtle so basically it is also home to assam roofed turtle so the parks of diverse flora and fauna contribute to its a significant global biodiversity hot spots right so the major attraction here is manas river so manas river is flowing through the park it supports a unique aquatic system the riverine habitats are crucial for several species of speech and migratory of fish and migratory birds enhancing the overall biodiversity of the park right so basically the one horned rhino it is uh, it was extinct from this particular area so it was reintroduced introduced in the manas national park so this is some of the important information about the manas national park next one is bandipur national park it is uh, located in karnataka so it was established in 1974 as a part of the uh, tiger river right <coughs> it is nestled in the western ghats so it was basically located in the western ghats bandipur uh, features a mix of deciduous forest grasslands and hills so the park's landscape is uh, interspersed with water bodies adding its ecological diversity so within the bandipur national park national park there there are several water bodies so the biodiversity here is uh, it is home to a variety of wildlife including bengal tigers indian elephants leopards uh, indian bison and uh, numerous species of deer and antelope so try to remember this point also right so here the park is also known for conservation of uh, su conservation success including the local community local communities right so because of the efforts and uh, involving the locals the um, i mean the wildlife in the park has been successfully uh, uh, we can say conserved right <coughs> so basically uh, the park is known for uh, preservation of bengal tiger and the indian elephant so because of this reason only success of uh, the conservation of efforts the karnataka hosts the largest tiger reserve largest tiger population tiger population in the country keep an eye on the tiger census so basically they are given for every 4 years so the majority of the tiger species number of tigers are tigers are living in, in the karnataka so because of the reason is the conservation successful conservation efforts right so similarly this is one of the uh, first and foremost foremost national parks to create a wildlife corridor wildlife corridor right wildlife corridor is basically whenever 
there is a road or a disturbance very whenever there is a infrastructure project so there are corridors uh, in uh, in uh, several interface so that wildlife can pass through here right so if this is a road or railway track so there will be bridges on which the wildlife can move from that part to this part of the park right so basically the uh, bandipur national park is one of the uh, first national parks to create a wildlife corridor for the uh, <coughs> uh, wildlife right see so here uh, here the nilagiri biosphere reserves it also serves as a crucial wildlife corridor connecting various protected areas within the region so here the nilgiri biosphere it also uh, works as a it also nilgiri biosphere works um, i mean it also works as a important corridor for this uh, bandipur national park it uh, the wildlife the biosphere reserve connects various uh, national parks and uh, wildlife sanctuaries that they are existing uh, in that area especially in the uh, tamil nadu karnataka and kerala area right so this is some of the important information about the bandipur national park next one is kebul lamjo national park so this is also when important uh, national park it is located in the manipur uh, northeastern state manipur right so it is a unique uh, sanctuary right <coughs> it is established in 1977 uh, the kebul lamjo national park is situated in loktak lake so the speciality of kebul lamjo national park is it is located in a particular lake loktak lake right so it is the uh, largest uh, freshwater lake in north northeastern india so it is the lar largest freshwater lake in northeastern india so it is the it covers uh, the 40 square kilometers we can say it is the smallest national park when it comes to size right it is characterized by floating pumdis so that it is the local language so pumdis the lake is famous for floating pumdis right so pumdi is heterogeneous mass of vegetation soil and organic matter that form the base for the park so basically there is a floating uh, mass of uh, grass is there so one that floating uh, uh, kind of grass mass is declared as the kebul lamjo national park right so the park is famous for floating pumdis the distinct feature of kebul lamjo is the floating pumdis which serve as the habitat for the endangered manipur bro antled deer also known as sangai deer so basically major attraction of this national park is sangai deer deer right so the pumdis floating land masses are crucial for the survival of the sangai deer right these are some of the national parks which i thought were important for the examination uh, you also from your side try to study and uh, gather information mm -hmm. about some more national parks so because of the po positive of time i could only cover these many national parks so on the map we will try to uh, understand the location of the uh, national parks which are located in india some of the important uh, national parks so right uh, the corbett jim corbett national park we have studied it is located in basically located in uttarakhand so it is at the foothills of himalayas similarly kajiranga national park we have studied it is located in assam it is famous for one horned rhino one horned rhino right similarly we have studied kebul lambo kebul lamjo national park it is uh, <coughs> known for uh, well known for fumdis and uh, uh, sangai deer similarly we have studied the kanha national park which is located in madhya pradesh and uh, pench national park also we have studied it is also located in uh, madhya pradesh and we have studied about uh, tadoba uh, tadoba andheri uh, tiger reserve and tadoba national park it is located in maharashtra and uh, we have studied bandipur national park it is located in uh, karnataka and uh, uh, we have studied ranthambor national park also it is located in uh, rajasthan so these are the some of the uh, national park we have focused on similarly other important uh, national parks 
uh, i will uh, i will look at them so that they may be important i mean they may whenever they, if they come in the examination uh, that uh, i mean that location will be helpful to you in eliminating a particular option so basically other important national parks are gir national parks so it is located in the gujarat so it is the it is famous for gir is uh, na famous for uh, asiatic lions asiatic lions so try to remember this aspect similarly uh, the hemis national park is there so it is famous for snow leopards it is located in ladakh region similarly great himalayas national park is also there right it is located in the himachal district himachal pradesh next is kanchenjunga national park it is located in sikkim uh, next important is namdapa national park it is located in arunachal pradesh similarly indravati national park it is located in chatisgarh ikshwaka national park uh, it is located in telangana right another bannergatta uh, sanctuary is there bannergatta national park is there it is also located in karnataka gundi national park it is located in tamil nadu similarly indira gandhi national park is there it is located in tamil nadu similarly silent valley national park is there it is located in karnataka nagar hol national park it is located in karnataka dandeli national park it is located in karnataka moolen uh, national park is there so it is basically located in goa right so moolen national park is there it is located in goa uh, the other national parks that are located in maharashtra are uh, sanjay gandhi national park so it is also located in uh, maharashtra when it comes to madhya pradesh uh, satpura national park is also there uh, similarly van vihar bhopal zoo is also there right so these are some of the national parks that are there in india uh, the important uh, national parks which i try to locate on the map of india right now we will see uh, <coughs> now we will see uh, some of the previous questions uh, one to previous questions first question it is asked in 2019 so the question is which of the following national parks lie completely in the temperate alpine zone so basically It, here the question is about location of the national park right so climate zones so basically you should be thorough with the climate climatic conditions and uh, geographical location of the national parks also so basically the options are manas national park namdapa national park nyora valley national park and valley of flowers national park so basically uh, the the park here the correct answer is the park the national park which is completely in the temperate uh, alpine zones is basically manas national park is uh, located in assam it won't completely come under the uh, temp alpine temperate zones second one is namdapa national park it is also not come under the this particular zone similarly nyora valley national park it is located in west bengal so it it is also not come completely under the temperate alpine zone so basically the valley of flowers national park it is located at the foot hills of himalayas right so basically the valley of flowers national park it is located completely located in the temperate alpine zone so uh, these type of questions are coming so you should be thorough about the location and the geography of the particular national park basically manas is located in assam namdapa is in arunachal and the nyora valley is in west bengal right second question So, which of the following national parks is unique in being a swamp with floating vegetation that supports a rich biodiversity? So, basically, it is uh, the national park. It is the question is about a particular national park which is unique for being a swamp with floating vegetation. Right. The options are Baitkarika National Park, Kebul Lamjo National Park, Kiola Dio, uh, Ghana National Park, and uh, Sultanpur National Park. so just now we have studied so kebul lamjo national park so it is uh, <coughs> located it is located on a uh, flowing landmass in the manipur state northeastern state of manipur it is famous for the park is also famous famous for sangai deer sangai deer 
the low lake is lake associated is loktak lake right so answer is answer b kebul lamjo national park right so this is uh, all for today i hope you have gained some important information through this discussion you also from your side try to know information about some more national parks so thank you thank you for joining the lecture this is for today this is it for today see you next time